Another hypothesis. What's that? A hypothesis is what you think might be the answer to a question. In this case, why ostriches put their heads in the sand. They might do it because they're scared, but there might be another reason. Well, my hypothesis is that they do it to hide from predators, from animals that want to eat them. But that leaves their whole body sticking out unprotected. Yeah, and if its head is in the ground, it won't be able to see a predator coming. Well, that might make them pretty silly, but you never know. So let's go find out why ostriches bury their heads in the sand. Let's find out what those ostriches are doing. Come on! Shh, we don't want them to run away. Right, and I have just the thing to help us get really close to them. <gasps> they're not real. I made them. They're hollow inside, so they're easy to carry. We can hide behind them and get closer to the ostriches. Wow, everybody, wow. Hurry up. Shh. Shh. Quiet, everybody. There they are. Shh. Oh, hey. Oh, ah. Ah. Come on. Let's try to get closer. Wow, they're even bigger close up. You know, we haven't seen any ostriches stick their head in the sand yet. Wait, I think that one is. But there haven't been any loud noises, and there aren't any predators around here. Those were two of the things we thought. So maybe that's not it. But it could still be hot. Or itchy. Look, there goes another one. Holding its head in the sand. Is it? I can't see what it's doing. I think we should try to get closer. <gasps> Ginormous eggs! <gasps> the eggs! Wow! Ooh. Those are definitely the biggest eggs in the world. That must be its nest. Look, it's turning the eggs with its beak. That's why it keeps lowering its head. They're not sticking their heads in the sand at all. They're sticking their heads in their nests. Which are a hole in the ground. We figured it out. Their necks are so long and their heads are so small that when they bend down, it just looks like they're sticking their head in the sand. And now we know because we investigated for ourselves. And now I know something about ostriches. We all do. Nash, watch ah. out. Whoa! Nash! Shh! Ostriches! <laughs> there you go, buddy. Oh, no! You okay, Nash? I know. I'm upset too. Maybe we can find a way to help. Help, help, Totals! Clean, clean up! Nash is right. We need to do something about this garbage. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. It's cleanup time. I'll get the polo marine. Moko, go there! Over there? Can't do. Lily, that way. That way? Chester, Chester! Come here! Huh? Chester, he's saying, come with me! Aha! Uh Aha! -huh, uh -huh. Why can everyone understand Nash but me? I don't know! <laughs> And if we work together, we can keep our planet clean. But the very best way you can help is to pick up after yourself. Then let's go be a cleanup team. Everybody clean up, clean up. Everybody clean up, clean up. Get your mask on, get your clean on. Everybody clean up. The 
ocean's a big place and there's still lots of it to clean up. But we did a great job here. Especially you, Nash. Yeah, we're really proud of you. And Nash, now I hope you understand the importance of cleaning up after yourself. are just big balls of ice and dust and rock until they get near the sun. Look, it's changing. Is it melting? It looks like the heat of the sun is setting it on fire. Because the sun's energy heats the comet's ice and gases, it's growing a long tail. Comet's dead! Willow, what do I do? Ah! You got this, Lily. Remember the button I told you not to touch? Well, punch it! Punching it! Gorby, the same green stuff that comes out of your nose. Whale boogers? Oh. Ew. Uh-oh. Whales don't need to surface for long to breathe. They shut their blowhole and then dive back underwater. Inside, everybody. Whoa. Humpback whales are humongous. so the whale can be heard by other whales from far away. <sighs> I really hope it'll sing with us. Let's find out. Hello, we are the Polos. And we'd be honored if we could record you singing with us. <gasps> you and your baby, how cute.
communicate Vocal tricks make a melody It sounds just like a song to me A song could be a warning or a friendly hello High like a chirp or way down low It's a language only whales can speak Sounds like a song to me ah, 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 This is a whale song ah, Pushing a ball of poop. It looks like a kind of beetle. What would such a little thing want with such a big ball of poop? You don't think it's gonna eat it? Ew! Ew. Uh, let's look it up. It's a dung beetle. Dung? What's that? Dung is another word for poop. And yes, it's going to eat it. Yuck! Why? It says here that whenever an animal eats something, not all of it gets digested. Some tiny undigested bits end up in its dung. And that's what dung beetles eat? Yes. They also get water from the dung. Okay, this time I'm going to say it. Yuck. Where's it going? Yeah, if they're going to eat dung, why not eat it right here? Yeah, there's plenty. They bury it so they can eat it later? And they lay their eggs in the dung balls. It looks like it's working really hard. That ball is huge in comparison to the beetle. Dung beetles are the strongest insect. It can move a ball over a thousand times its weight. That's like you pulling a school bus, Nash. Wow. But that's not all. Dung beetles help the environment of the savannah by burying and eating tons of dung produced by other animals. You mean they help to keep this place clean? Yes. Plus, flies lay eggs and dung. So by eating and burying so much of it, the dung beetles stop the fly eggs from hatching. So, fewer flies. That's amazing. Actually, dung beetles are amazing. Dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle, dung beetle. We've got a dirty job that someone's gotta do. They're small but mighty and they're tidy too. We're lucky there's a bug that's willing to lug around so much poop. They go to work every single day with a tumbling dance that looks like play. But if you had to do a job with poop, would you? Changing to Polo Marine mode. And down we go! Hey, it says here that the ocean has different zones that get different amounts of sunlight. Right now, we're in the topmost zone, called the sunlit zone. Plenty of sunlight can reach this area, but the deeper we go down, the darker it gets. Below the sunlit zone is the twilight zone. Here, a little sunlight can reach. And below that, deep, deep down, is a midnight zone. Light can't reach here at all, so it's completely dark. Wow! It's getting really dark. And we're here. Uh, it's kind of spooky. I'll turn the headlights on. Whoa! What is that? A rat tail fish. It's named that because of its really long tail fin. In the deep ocean, only plants and animals that can survive extreme pressure live here. And most of them look very unusual. Ooh, like that creature. Yes, that's a type of sea slug called a nudibranch. It's cool, but I don't see Nash's dolphin. Ooh, what's that thing? What is it? Wow! Jellyfish! <gasps> and they're glowing! 
when a creature can make its own light, it's called bioluminescence. It's very useful when there's no sunlight around. Lucky dolphin! <gasps> Nash, you found it! The glow from the jellyfish helped you see where your toy landed. Oh, yeah. Way to go, Nash. All right. We got it! Nice, nice work, work, Willow. Dolphin. Here you go, Nash. Good as new. <sighs> Wait! Just a little soggy still. <laughs> have black and white stripes, Nash. Of course, there's more than one species of zebra. Chester, maybe that's it. It turns out there are three different kinds of zebras. And each kind of zebra has different stripes. Take a look, Nash. Nope, long stripes. Well, there's this one. Nah. -uh. Here's the third one. The plain zebra. That looks like one we've seen around here. What do you say? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But wait, what is it, Lily? We still don't know how to pick out Natchez zebra from all the other zebras around here. Yes, but it also says that every individual zebra has a unique pattern of stripes. So you can tell them apart. But we don't know what that zebra looks like. Hmm. Heel. <gasps> Nash is selfie with the zebra. We'll totally be able to see its stripes now. Audrey, could you scan for zebra herds? Scanning. Scanning. I have detected a few herds of zebra directly ahead. All yeah. right. Then let's go. Wow. So many zebras. And we have to find just the right set of stripes. I'm having an engineering moment. Behold, the Polo Zebra Matcher. It should be able to compare the stripe pattern of Nash's zebra to any other zebra. Yay! Yay! Is it here? Hmm. Doesn't look like Nash's zebra is in this herd. Well, I guess we'll keep looking then. Let's go! It's not in this herd. Or this one. Nope, Nash's zebra isn't in this herd either. I wonder why zebras even have stripes. <gasps> when they move, their stripes make it hard to tell where one zebra starts and another one ends. So it would be hard for predators too. That must be why they have stripes. For protection. My zebra! <laughs> Scanning? Scanning? It's a match! That's Nash's zebra! I think Nash already knew that. Hello. Yeah. Scientists think their stripes also confuse bugs and keep them from being bitten. I wish I had stripes. <laughs> <laughs>